Do you know what it's like to be scared? Uh-uh, not me. I'm not scared of anything. If you try to get right, then you listen to my dad. <laughs> He's a beast. And if you don't want to listen to him, okay, okay. You don't want to, you don't want to get successful. If you ain't trying to dominate, man, then go listen to something else. Welcome, athletes, top performers, and all those looking to gain that killer instinct, that edge you need to dominate in any environment. This is the Sports Motivation Podcast, and I'm your host, Nee Shobo. I played ball and succeeded at the highest levels, and I'm now committed to showing you how you can accomplish the ambitious goals and visions that you have. This podcast is designed to teach you high-level strategy, not just fluff and hype. This will cut to the core if you let it. And by taking action on the practical and next-level advice I share, you will see results. Expect that. Expect to be more confident. Expect to be more focused. Expect to be more decisive. And expect to be more fearless. Expect to become the leader your vision needs you to become. So listen up. Take notes. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Sports Motivation Podcast. It's your host, Nee Shobo. Also, welcome back to the Keys to Being Fearless series where I'm breaking down, obviously, the keys to being fearless. Man, a lot of times, man, people ask me why, like, why I do what I do or what caused me to decide to do what I do. It's kind of funny because looking back, when you think about when you grow up and you say, what do I want to be when I grow up or what do I want to do? What I'm doing now never crossed my mind. It wasn't like, yeah, I want to, you know, work with athletes or, you know, teach them the mindset that they need to perform under pressure or, you know, psychology or any of these type of things that I'm into now, right? But the cool thing about once you find your destiny in life, like what it is you're called to do, what you what you are meant to do, I believe that it will happen out of necessity or out of just a pure love or desire or passion for what it is that you're doing, right? But many times what I've learned, especially as I read and I understand the, the journeys of those people who have had big impact on the world, right, is that these people, it's not like they were, they just decided one day they were going to become the president of the United States or they just decided, like Martin Luther, Martin Luther King just decided that he was going to be a catalyst for desegregation, getting the voting rights for blacks changing the culture of America. Now, these things were a decision, but a lot of times it was out of necessity, out of what was, out of the, you know, the realities of what was going on. And so for me, what I found in my journey with myself, with my peers, as I played sports at every level, as I struggled with things, as I had injuries, as I dealt with anxieties and lack of confidence, and then I, you know, got done with football and dealt with that uncertainty, I realized is that like everyone's scared, man. Everyone's scared. Everybody's scared. Everyone is driven by fear. And it frustrated me. I was training athletes in the gym. I'm like, man, y'all don't need no more training, man. I'll let other people do that. You need somebody to teach you how to be fearless. You need somebody to help you develop confidence so that you could actually perform when it means something, so that you can get yourself to perform when it means something. And you need to know how to do that. You need to like systematically know how to do that. You don't need more motivation necessarily. You don't need more, you know, memes and montages of quotes over music. You don't need that. There's value in that. Y'all know I do that. But you need practical, you need a system to show you how to be fearless. All right? And so that's why I created this, this, this series that I'm doing outlining for you guys right now. And that's why I do what I do. Ultimately, the ultimate purpose for I'm Not You is to teach the world how to be fearless. Not just athletes, the world. I want you to approach your craft with a fearless mindset. So how do you do that? In the first episode, we talked about the power of the mind and understanding that your emotions lie to you. We're built to survive. Our minds lie to us. We must use our conscious, rational mind and overcome our instincts, our animal instincts, 
in order to accomplish our goals, to be fearless, to gain the confidence necessary, the juice necessary to accomplish our goals. Episode number two, I had a lot of fun with that, man. I, I showed you guys my rules. I showed you you got to live by rule. Broke down James Allen, Mastery of Destiny, one of my favorite books. He talks about man, man must live by rule. You must have rules and principles. You cannot be willy-nilly. You cannot approach your craft willy-nilly. You must be like LeBron James, uh, Tom Brady, Steph Curry. These guys' routines are ridiculous. They live by rule. They know how much to eat. They know what not to eat. They know how much to sleep. They know how much to train. They know when to rest. It's all strategy. It's all built in. It's rules. It's not principles. So it doesn't matter if you want to eat this. You cannot eat this. It's based on a vision. It's based on a specific outcome or a set of outcomes. So today, we're going to continue with our keys to being fearless. And today is going to be all about knowing yourself. All about knowing yourself. Sun Tzu, Art of War, right? He says, if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you don't need to fear the results of 100 battles. You need not fear the results of 100 battles if you know the enemy and you know yourself. You must know yourself. Lao Tzu, I just uh, read, uh, got the book Complete Works of Lao Tzu. I think it's called Tao Te Ching. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ancient, ancient texts we're talking about. Classic. Lao Tzu, he says, he who knows others is wise. But he who knows himself is enlightened. You must know yourself. That is a key. That's a major key. If you don't know yourself, you should be scared because you're going to put yourself in an environment that's not going to facilitate your growth. You're not going to know what needs to be done. Your emotions will lie to you. You will feel stress. Cortisol will be released. Your amygdala will flame up. You will act based on emotions if you don't know yourself. But if you know who you are, you know who you're not. You won't be like a lion who's a lion in the jungle, the king of the jungle, right? But what happens when a lion goes, hangs out with some gorillas? Can he climb trees? No. What happens if a lion goes, goes to hang out in the, in the Arctic with some polar bears? Is he going to be very successful? Hell no, he won't. The lion must know himself. He must put himself in his own jungle, in the jungle. And he also has got to know when he is hanging out with monkeys, when he is hanging out with zebras, when he is hanging out with, if he does happen to land himself in the Arctic, he's got to know his limitations. He can't try to jump in the cold water with a polar bear thinking he's going to go catch a seal or else he wants to, or, or else he wants to, you know, drown to death. So you got to know yourself, man. Know yourself. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be giving you some very specific things that you need to, that you need to know about yourself. As an athlete and just as a person in general, that's going to help you succeed and help you develop a more dominant, fearless mindset. All right. So what are the things that you must know about yourself? It's very simple. I'm going to break them down and I'm going to start with what I, what I believe that the top two things are that are such a given. But I'm surprised at how many people don't know these. All right. Here's what I, here's what I mean. You play a sport or you even if you don't play a sport, quote unquote, you play a sport. Meaning you have a job that needs to be done. You work within the realms of a team and you have specific results you want to accomplish, right? You want to win and whatever winning is to you. But here's the trip that I found about a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what outcomes they're responsible for. What outcomes are you responsible for on your team? Do you know that? For example, if you're a basketball player, right? And you keep trying to shoot jump shots. And you keep getting frustrated because your coach keeps taking you out. Are you responsible for the outcome of making three-point shots within the realm of that team? Are you responsible for that? Or do you just think that you are? Do you think you're a great three-point shooter or hope that you are or wish that you are? You need to know specifically what outcomes you're responsible for. This is true in business. If, if you have a business and I ask you what outcomes are you responsible for, it's not just generating profit. I'm talking about what are what I call the steady gains outcomes. Those outcomes that you always must be achieving consistently in order to stay afloat as a business. Generating leads. Serving your current clients. Innovating, you know, creating new products. Whatever it is for you, what outcomes are you responsible for? As an athlete, what outcomes are you responsible for? 
You're responsible for keeping your body healthy, right? You're responsible for knowing your place. You're responsible for boxing out and rebounding. You're responsible for mastering your jump shot or whatever else, right? You need to know what, res- what outcomes you are responsible for. If you don't know, then no wonder you lack confidence. No wonder you don't have a fearless mindset. You need to know what you're responsible for. The outcomes, they need to be detailed. They need to be outlined. That's number one. You got to know that. Next is you need to know what is required to accomplish those outcomes. You need to know the details about how to do those, to get those outcomes. So if you know that you need to be healthy as an athlete, but you don't know how to be healthy, so you go out eating McDonald's every night, you don't stretch, you don't hydrate yourself, and you show up and pull a hamstring on winter conditioning, no wonder you lack confidence. You didn't know what outcome you were responsible for, and you didn't know what was necessary to accomplish it. You didn't read any books, books on nutrition. You didn't get a, a, you know, a meal plan set out for yourself. You didn't model those who were getting the results that you wanted. And you paid the price for it. And now you lack confidence. Now you're scared. Now you're tentative. You see the cycle? You have to know what it takes in order to be great in what it is that you're doing. And you need to know how to accomplish those outcomes. Those are the top two. You must know those things. If you don't know, if you can't say them out loud to yourself right now, you got problems. You must know that. All right. Number three, you got to know how you best learn, how you best learn. There's a great book by Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker is a world-renowned, famous, I think he, he passed away now, um, classic books, man. He has like, I, I can't even, probably has like 20 plus books, um, but he's a marketing expert. I think his, what was his specialty? All around management, business, right? And he has a great book called Managing oneself is a small little pocket book. You're probably reading about 20 minutes. And the whole premise is that if you don't know yourself, you can't manage yourself. You can't possibly manage others. And he talks about knowing how you best learn. Like, how do you best learn things? I was just talking to my daughter just the other day. And she was complaining about how, you know, she wasn't, she's not doing that well in a particular class. Can't remember what class it was. And she was complaining about how the teacher you know, didn't teach in her style. And I'm like, well, how, okay, well, how do you learn? And she told me how she best learns. She's like, yeah, I don't learn well by, you know, writing stuff down. I have to actually do it. I said, okay, so what are you doing with that knowledge? She looked at me blank faced. So I say, so you're here complaining about the teacher, not changing up the, her whole approach based on your style. When you know your style, But when you're outside of class, which you're only in for about an hour a day, you don't have any plan to continue learning in your style. You need to know how you learn. And if you know how you learn, then learn in that way. Do whatever is necessary. Get yourself a tutor. Sets. If you know that you work best with a workout partner, then get a workout partner. Oh, but I don't have time. Well, all right then I guess you don't want your results. Make the time. Find the time. Create the circumstances you want. Create them. But you have to know. It starts from that knowledge, how you best learn. Understand yourself. Number four, you have to know how you receive love. You're probably wondering, like, what is this, man? Like, what is this, um, Dr. Phil? (laughs) I swear, I I tell people this a lot. You guys know I read a lot, man. I read a lot of parenting books. I have five children. And so anyone who has kids, I'll just tell you right now, if you plan on having kids and you think that your instincts are going to lead you to be a great father or mother, you're lying to yourself. You are not equipped with the tools and, and strategies in order to be successful as a parent. Not unless you had all-star parents, and most of us didn't, because most of our parents didn't go to graduate, you know, graduate from a university on how to raise kids. They got it passed down from theirs. So anyway, I read a lot of books, man, a lot of parenting books, and they help me out a lot. I always tell people, parenting, I have had the most breakthroughs by reading parenting books. I don't know why that is. I think it has to do with when you read a book on parenting, you understand children's psychology. And when you understand a child's psychology, you better understand yourself because you understand why you are the way that you are. Because a lot of your habits are built when you're young. 
A lot of habits are built when you're young. I think it's like the age of eight. I can't remember what book I read this in, but at the age of eight is when your brain kind of like a lot of the fixed, they don't become fixed to where you can't change them, but a lot of who you are is solidified to a certain degree by the age of eight. So if you can understand your ch child psychology, you start to understand who you are. But anyway, I say this because there's a great book called The Five Love Languages, right? Gary Chapman, I think. And he created The Five Love Languages of Children. And I suggest anyone with kids should read that. And anyone in general should read The Five Love Languages. Because there is a lot of divorces that are real that happen because people don't understand how they receive love. They don't understand that they best receive love through words of affirmation or gifts, etc. And then you're saying, well, what does this have to do with my sport? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a breakup? Have you ever gone through a rough time in your relationship while you were playing your sport? How did that affect your, your attitude towards practice? How did that affect your ability to rest, to sleep at night? If there's anything that causes more insomnia, it's relationships with other human beings. And I'm not even just talking about relationships with a loved one necessarily. I'm talking about coaches. You have a relationship with your coach, right? If you understand the five love languages and how people receive love and feel love, you can change the way that you talk to a certain teammate because maybe his, 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 his love language is not words. Maybe it's touch, physical touch. So coming up on that teammate, grabbing around the neck, dapping him up, showing some love. Or maybe you're like me and it's words of affirmation. I don't do well with the touch. So don't go smacking my helmet. Come up to me, talk to me. Tell me how I did a good job. Encourage me. That's how I, that's how I receive love. That helps me out. Because now I can better sense that in other people who are like me. And I can give them love how they need. I can be a better leader. You want to be a leader on your team, right? Again, this, this surpasses relationships. But let me just tell you straight up. Because I've been in bad relationships how much that affects your ability to play at a high level. I've gone through a stressful, stressful breakup in the middle of my season as an NFL athlete. That's not fun. That's not fun at all. So if you know how you receive love, you understand how others receive love, you are going to be better equipped to be successful. When you're better equipped, you're not as scared. You're confident. But if you don't, no wonder you lack confidence. No wonder you have no idea how to get through, those, through to those teammates. No wonder now you're tentative, you're scared. No wonder you're overly concerned with what they think because you don't understand how they think. That's critical, all right? Next one, obvious how much sleep you need. Like, listen, I don't, there's people out there who claim they can get by on four or five hours of sleep. They know themselves. There's some people who need like 10, 9, 8. Figure out what, what your strategy is, man. I'm still working on mine, to be honest. I haven't figured out my formula. That is a goal of mine. I have not yet cracked the code of sleep. Now, I sleep well at night. I, go, I fall asleep like a baby. But when I wake up, I'm tired, man. I have not figured out how to wake up feeling refreshed, energized, ready to go. That's something I'm working on. But I know that if I get four to five hours of sleep, I better set like, I better have like a time. Like, I better have like a mind. My room better be set up with like 50 alarm clocks. Because I'm going to have a hard time waking up. You got to know how much sleep you need. Sleep is critical. I'm not going to go into all of the detail because that's not my expertise. But I will tell you, pick up a book, understand health, Google the, the power of sleep. You need to know how much sleep you need. Next, you need to know what your bloodline values are. You need to know what's important to you. What are the three things that are most important to you in life? And I don't mean things. I don't mean means to an end. I don't mean family. People say family. No, it's not family. Family is a means to an end because you probably have family you don't like, right? So the family that you do have, what is the feeling or emotion or real blood or value that's attached to that? Is it connection? Is it love? Is it trust? You need to know what those end values are. Great book, Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. He talks about the difference between the values, means versus ends. People say, oh, that you value money. No, money's the means value that gives you what? Is it freedom? Is it security? Is it importance? Some people want money to feel really secure. Some people want money to feel very important, buying Louis Vuitton and, and diamond necklaces. Some people want money to freedom, to, to, for adventure. You need to know what your values are, what's most important to you. You need to know that honestly. 
And lastly, you need to know what your liabilities are. What are your, your, your weaknesses, if you want to call them that? In character and skill. In character, I mean, what are the actual intangible qualities that you lack? Do you lack patience? Do you lack confidence? Do you, are you, do you have anxiety a lot? Do you lack discipline? You need to know what they are. If you know what they are, then you can actually improve them. But if you don't know what they are and you're scared to be real with yourself about what they are, then that's only going to create more fear, more anxiety. Because you're going to spend all your time trying to protect your false identity. You need to know what those things are, right? So what do you do now with those things? So I said you should, I said you should know those things. Do you agree that you should know all the, the answers to all those questions? Are you confident in at least that? So now what do you do? Then figure it out. Go figure out the answers to these questions. Write them out. Know them. Memorize them. Live them. And put yourself in an environment that allows you to succeed. With that knowledge now, strengthen the liabilities. Double down on your strengths. And be aligned in the jungle. Don't go to the Arctic. Find your jungle. Create your environment. Create your jungle. You might have to end up in the Arctic every once in a while. As a gorilla, you might end up in a cave full of lions. But you better know yourself. You better know what you can do and what you can't do. And that will give you a powerful sense of confidence. That will add to your fearlessness. You know what's a trip, man? No one ever broke this down for me. People always just say you got to be fearless. How do you be fearless, though? How do you do it? This is how you do it. Know yourself. Know yourself, all right? So go ahead and go through all seven of those key aspects that you must know about yourself. Write them down. Memorize them. Keep them with you. Study them. Add to them. Subtract from them. Keep inventory of them. Understand it, all right? And catch me on the next episode where I'm going to be talking about how to separate yourself from the masses, how to become a part of the 2% so that you can continue on your road to being fearless. You can be a leader in your community, in your team, in your family, in your job, in your company. You could be a leader in this world. That's what you want to be, right? All right, let's do it. See you on the next episode. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to the Sports Motivation Podcast. Make sure if you dig in the podcast, go and subscribe so you can always get the latest episodes. I come out with a new episode twice a week on Tuesday and Friday at 3 a.m. Eastern. And make sure you go ahead and rate it and leave me a good review. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Much love.